everyone, welcome back to Pommy and Oz. If you are new around here, please like and subscribe. Before we get into the video though, thank you so much for all you guys and girls who have reached out. It means the world to me. It's great to know that we've got a great support network here. And you know what, I've missed you guys and girls a hell of a lot. Some serious stuff though. As you know, I went through a bit of stuff over the last week and some very close to me suffered from this. So what I'd like you to all do, if you are feeling a little bit down, if you are feeling a bit low, please reach out to a loved one. And if you can't do that, and if it's too much, please call Lifeline 131114 and speak to someone. It is so important, not just for yourself, but those around you. Remember, even though you don't feel that way, you are incredibly loved. And the effect when you won't be here will be felt astronomically. And that is the impact of each and every one of us as a human being. So what we're going to do is we're going to look now on something a bit more light. We're going to look at the AFL tipping. So last week... I got, again, 6 out of 9. So that takes the total so far to this year to 12 out of 18. And it's the same teams that are letting me down. So let's have a see how we go in round 3. So we start off tonight at 7.40. Marvel Stadium, the second home of football, is it? I don't know. Collingwood entertain Brisbane. And this should be a really intriguing one because obviously Brisbane have started the year 0-2. Collingwood, on the other hand, they're 1-1 one and, one and they were very impressive against Carlton and really demonstrated what many people say they can't do and that was decent forward craft. They really did cause Carlton issues in the forward half of the ground. It's going to be an interesting one this as well because Brisbane are going into this one without Oscar McInerney there. Ruckman, we know the superstar Cam Rayner is out as well. It's going to be an interesting one I think as well because if it's 0-3 and three for Brisbane that could be astronomical in the consequences. We know, we keep saying it, five teams have made finals from 0 and 2. 0 and 3 it goes even less. We'd have to go back to Sydney when they started. I think it was 0 and 6 in their year and they ended up making finals. They can definitely do it, but this will make it hard. When we look in the last five, Collingwood do have the wood on them. They have won four of the last five. And I think that's going to continue this week as well. I'm going to tip Collingwood here by 12. I think they've got more than enough to get the job done. And I think the Pies will go 2-1 and one at the end of the day. Then Friday, we've got a really intriguing one in the afternoon fixture. Good Friday, as we know. 420 again at the Marvel. We've got North Melbourne versus the Bulldogs. And this one is kind of a no-brainer. And if I'll do a spoiler. We're tipping the Doggies here. The Doggies of 2-0, and zero, they look really impressive. North Melbourne are 0-2. and two. We know North Melbourne are going through like a very transitional phase in their football club's development. Doggies, on the other hand, very impressive last week against the Eagles. I was very impressed with them against Collingwood as well. They've got all the things that I look for in a football club. I think they play a really good brand. I think it's a very solid, solid game style as well. And when we look at the head-to-head -head as well, it's three in favour of the Doggies versus two to North. I think that'll continue. I just can't see North winning too many games. Um, and I don't think that that's their aim this year anyway. I think it's to really blood this game style. It's a competitive game style, but I'm going to tip the doggies here. It's just going to be too much when you've got nine players that can get 25 touches or more in, in your midfield and your halfback line. You're going to control games. They'll control the foot here. I think it'll be dogs by 49. Then 7.50 on the Friday evening at the AO, and I'm super excited about this one. Adelaide versus Gold Coast. This, like... You know, Friday night, I'm usually... Friday night, usually, I'm that kind of guy that's like, you know, I want to see top teams play. But this is a really nail-biting tie. And it's going to be an intriguing one. Both sides are one and one Both sides coming in in real kind of question marks about their year. Adelaide have really impressed me, though. I went back and watched that Geelong game, and what impresses me about them is their willingness to attack space, to close space down, to not make it easy. Gold Coast are really impressing me as well. Last week against North, I thought they were really impressive as well. I thought a lot of their young players are really starting to stand out. Noah Anderson as well, he's really impressing me. In the absence of Rao, because you've got to remember, he is the second best player in that draft. And he was really impressive. I like what Gold Coast are building as well. Like I watch Gold Coast and I'm really intrigued by their game style. I think Dew has got them playing in such a positive way. And so has Nick's at Adelaide. And something's got to give this week. Now, obviously, there's the Tex factor. Tex is in absolute sensational form, and it's great to see Tex play. He's a character of the game. Gold Coast, they're going to have to alleviate that problem. But against my better judgment here, I'm going to back Gold Coast in. The form book suggests that I'm mad because Adelaide have won four of the last five contests. 
But Gold Coast did sneak the one last year in the COVID year. I'm going to tip them though. I'm going to tip Gold Coast by 15. And that's probably the one I'm going to get wrong. Then Saturday afternoon, 1.45 at the home of football at the MCG. We have the Tigers versus Sydney. Now this one here is a, a game that is the tale of t two teams at 2-0, and o, which is kind of a surprise for many. Sydney have been really, really impressive, especially against Brisbane. They're intent to the ball. They've started to add a bit of dynamic outside run as well. And their young players are really going off. Golden and Campbell look real sorts. McDonald up forward as well. And then you've got the buddy factor last week that that showed as well. He's back in town. It's a very talented side, and I think a lot of people are remembering the old Sydney, you know, the contested, boring football. We're starting to see a more expansive game plan from them, and it is really exciting. They've got some talented youngsters. Richmond, on the other hand, it's old hat, isn't it now? They've been one of the most dominant sides, if not the dominant side for the last five years, and I think that they've got the ability to do this. We look at the head-to-head, -head, it's three and two, but more importantly... The last three are all Tigers victories, especially at the G as well, where they're more dominant. I think it'll be a really good game, and I think Sydney will challenge them for large parts. But a bit like round one, I think once Richmond go up that gear, it's game over. I'm going to tip Richmond here by 27. Then we've got a really exciting tie on the Saturday afternoon. We've got Essendon versus St Kilda at the Marvel. And I always think Marvel games with St Kilda and Essendon are kind of an intrigue anyway when they play there because they do seem to have a really happy place there. It does seem to be something happens to both sides. More so St Kilda. When we look at the head-to-head, -head, St Kilda have won three of the last five. They, or more importantly, have won the last two. And particularly last year, they really did play Essendon off the park. Starting the year as well, form-wise, Essendon are zero and two. And obviously, St Kilda got that GWS win. And kind of put, didn't really perform against Melbourne. I think with Ratton sides, you never play bad twice, is my opinion. So I think that's an intriguing factor to take into account in this one. I do think St Kilda have got too much, too much talent all across the lines to win this. I'm going to tip St Kilda by 21. Saturday evening, this is an absolute rip-snorting game and I can't wait. We've got the long Easter weekend to watch this. We've got West Coast versus Port at 8.10 at the Optus Oval. And both sides have been in decent form. Port 2-0, they were destroyed north and they were very systematic against Essendon last week. West Coast, they did the job and it was a nail-biter against Gold Coast and then they just lost out to the Doggies last week but it was a very good game and it was kind of won and lost by one percenters. West Coast, Optus Oval though for me are always a dangerous task. When we look at the head-to-head, -head, Port have the last two but prior to that last three with West Coast. West Coast lead the head-to-head. -head. I know that Port are very good, but I just think West Coast, they just control the football so well at the Optus. I know Port will fancy themselves because they have won there before, but I do think that the Eagles have got something brewing. I do feel it. I think the Eagles will win this one by 11, and I'm tipping that one with a high degree of confidence. Talking about being confident, Sunday, Arvo 320 Marvel Stadium. Carlton Fremantle. Well, you, yeah, Carlton. God, it's, it's tough. Carlton 0 and 2. A tough loss to Richmond round 1 and didn't turn up against Collingwood. Fremantle, on the other hand, very impressive win last week against GWS when they are depleted and they also just went down to Melbourne when they were depleted as well. What was an impressive performance? We know with the head-to-head -head that it's the last two of Carlton. They've been nail-biters, haven't they? They have been hard-fought wins. Great stories as well against the odds. And this third-time game for Carlton has a lot of stories that Carlton like Hollywood, don't they? They like a Hollywood story, backs against the wall type thing. And it's set up for them. It's going to be intriguing, this one, because Fremantle are so good at controlling the footy. They're so good at working the ball around the contest. And they're hungry. They are very hungry, even without that five... It's okay saying no five, no Fremantle. There is no evidence of that. I think when you look at the Fremantle that play today, right this minute, they are hungry. They have a lot of talent in their lines and they, they, they can overcome the odds. This is a banana skin tie. I do think Carlton are going to respond and they have to against Collingwood. I think it's probably disaster time. You know, hit the red button if Carlton lose this one. Going to tip Carlton by seven. May not be pretty, 
but it'll be effective. Then we go to the Manuka Oval in ACT, Canberra, the home of GWS versus Melbourne. And this should be, again, a game where I think you've got Melbourne 2 and 0 and GWS 0 and 2. GWS need to respond in this one. Melbourne, they're playing good football, and I like Melbourne as well. I like watching them, and you've got to think there's a few players to come back into this side, and they were impressive against St Kilda. They work a game plan, and more importantly, they stop a game plan. High tackle pressure, they really do cover the ground well. GWS, it just feels kind of... feels like it's there, but it's not there. Um, we look at the head-to-head. -head. GWS have won two of the last five. Melbourne winning the last three. Melbourne winning the last time out as well in what was a nail-biter in 2020. It was a really good game. I'm going to say that the form book again continues and I think Melbourne will win this one by nine. And then we finish our long weekend of footy with a traditional game that is always a barnstormer and that's Geelong versus the Hawks. Hawks 1-0, and zero. they lost to Richmond last time out but they were impressive against Essendon. They came back hard and showed that their game plan is very, very formidable, that kick-heavy game style. Geelong, shock loss to Adelaide, but they backed it up last week in probably the, a deserved but undeserved victory against Brisbane. Brisbane probably should have won that if the umpire's eyes were open. It's going to be an intriguing one, this at the G, because, you know, the Hawks play the G well. You'd say probably better than Geelong at times, but I do think Geelong are hungry. There's something about them, there's a hunger. I, I like to see Scott argue with the Brisbane players i think that shows that there's a bit of a desire a bit of commitment to them and i do think geelong will get the job done here 22 and i think it'll be an impressive performance and one that makes people start talking about them they're my tips then let me know in the comments who you're back in till next time palm out and you know what much love to you all